Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Send in the Humans, I guess, written by Real Nectarine 7986. It has been nearly 500 years since the war between the Hitak Systems Alliance and the Nakati Imperium began. 500 years of bloody back and forth over the frontier systems, now rendered nearly inhabitable due to constant warfare. Nobody remembers how or even why it started. Popular theories range from either side simply wanting to expand their respective territory to threats and assassination attempts on the other's leadership. Any record of that time was lost during the opening stages when both sides attacked the other with computer viruses to disable their respective economy. It didn't work. The Alliance and the Imperium were technologically nearly on the same level, and when one developed a new technology, it was not long before it was either stolen by the other side or it was captured in a battle and reverse engineered. It had gotten to the point where the level of technology on both sides was so high that scientists and inventors were struggling to improve on anything. Alliance Council meeting. Yeah, are you insane? The Zothan Council member shouted at the Sithanian Council member. They will be slaughtered like vermin. I have to agree with my fellow council member there. Another council member from the Naban stated. The human fleet, large as it is, is far too technologically inferior to anything that we or the enemy have at our disposal. Would you all shut up already and listen to the rest of the information? The human council member, a formal general, called out. Humans. They were the most recent species to join the Alliance, only having joined some 40 years prior. Though the only reason they joined the Alliance and not the Imperium or any other faction was that the Alliance was the only faction that did not have a system of forced slavery in motion. The system of slavery that the Alliance has in place is purely one where the enslaved is working off their debts to someone else, and once the debt is paid, the slave is freed and has legitimate work experience on their CV, as the humans call it. In addition to prevent any extreme exploitation and appalling treatment, the slaves are closely monitored by the Council Ancients. Humanity, at that point, had only begun to colonize its neighboring star system. With the help of the Alliance, their technology made leaps and bounds, though they were not at a level where the Alliance thought that they would be useful in war, mainly because humans seemed to detest the idea of solely relying on energy and plasma-based weapons across all of their armed forces. No, their shielding tech is considerable and their hyperdrives are in some ways superior to FTL drives the Alliance uses. Not necessarily faster, but easier to produce and maintain. For goodness sake, they still use kinetic projectile weapons which were phased out millennia ago due to modern armor being able to withstand those ordinances. Sure, it worked, but why stick to something so primitive when something better and more effective exists? The Sithenian council member nodded to his colleague in gratitude the human's rough attitude allowing him to continue talking. The humans have a saying, take a step back and look at the big picture. It pains me to say it, but my recent meeting with the human government has brought to light several factors that none of us have known about or even considered. He took a deep breath. The humans have a long-standing history of martial prowess. They are new to the galactic stage and, and thus have a different perspective than what is standard amongst the galactic communities. In the last 10 years, they have analyzed every battle, every tactic used, and every strategy employed by both our forces and that of the Imperium that we have on record. They have come up with hundreds of different strategies that we have never even thought of in the last month alone. Their combat doctrine differs greatly from our own. He looked around the Great Hall, looking at the dozens of individuals staring right back. Remember that one time we invited the humans to a war game? How one single human division managed to hold off against four of our divisions, despite the disparity in technology. How they held the line whilst their allies fled the field. Several council members either flinched or grimaced at the reminder. It had been a slaughter. Oh, those guys were fresh trainees, uh, not veteran stock, the human commented. If our fresh trainees are capable of doing all that. What's stopping you all from accepting the Sithenian council member's proposal? Why not let us prove our mettle? The man lit his cigarette. Unless you don't want us to show you how inadequate your military really is. Even if we call on you now, 
It'll take months or even years until... Another council member began. Three weeks! The human interrupted him, stunning everyone, even the Sithenian council member. In three weeks, we'll have a fleet ready for departure. That fast enough for you all? Numbly, the council member sat down. Good! I gotta make a call. See you all in a bit, the human said, extinguishing his cigarette on his boot and left towards the communication center. All right, who is going to support the humans? The Zothan council member asked. The human was so insane that it was contagious. Three weeks. That was absolutely insane. Two years later, humanity's entry into the war wrought a storm all across the galaxy. Why wouldn't it? It took the humans around two months to breach their defenses on one of the most heavily defended cities on one of the frontier planets. Another month for them to capture its spaceport. And then another two weeks to sort through all of the soldiers who gave up after their lifeline was severed. All the while, the human fleets fought for dominance and it became clear why that human council member was so insane. No, sure of the odds. Firstly, the humans deployed a total of 100 Army and Marine Corps divisions each containing at least 15,000 to 20,000 combat personnel, not including support, staff, armor, artillery, air force, logistics, etc. Secondly, the human fleet did not fire from a distance, even if they admit that their long-range capabilities are a tad lacking. Instead, they are insane enough to use their hyperdrives to land their ships right in between the Imperium's warships and proceed to deliver a literal hell upon the Imperial Navy. Thirdly, what no one other than the humans and maybe a few other young species realized was that over the centuries following the abandonment of kinetic weapons in favor of energy-based ones, the armor that had at one point been impervious to any sort of small kinetic fire had slowly been replaced by armor specifically designed for energy weapons. Of course, the current line of armor was resistance to kinetics, but that was because the fragmentation from artillery explosions... The same problem also befell the ships in the galaxy's navies, metal giving way to energy-resistant ceramic composites that turned out to be rather brittle to the mass-accelerated cannon rounds the humans employed for their secondary armaments on anything bigger than a light cruiser. Both, the humans are truly insane. On several occasions, their units have been surrounded by Imperial forces. Standard procedure dictated that they ought to surrender. Try telling that to a human. Especially one from Ireland who just had his whiskey flask shot out of his hand. That particular battle was at most a pyrrhic victory for the Imperium. In the last two years, the former frontier systems had become silent. If one were to ignore the terraforming vessels approaching and leaving the systems, that is. The irony. The Imperium and the Alliance had invested so much energy and resources into those frontier systems that every one of their worlds except for the numerous homeworlds had little to nothing in the way of defensive installation. Which leads to the last little detail the humans made known. Because whilst the galaxy was distracted by the fireworks, as the humans called it, small nimble human flotillas began raiding systems deep within Imperium space, even momentarily appearing above the Imperium capital, destroying an orbital shipyard, then disappearing. Now, the Imperium and the Alliance met to discuss terms, with the former desperately trying to ban the humans' use of their kinetic weapons. The human representative just laughed before stating, Hey, our guns work just fine. It's you guys that have forgotten how effective they can be. Why change something that works, after all? End of story. Story number two. Gentle Repose, written by Coyote Havoc. Ezreal jerked awake at the sound of his name, looking for who had called him, mentally preparing an excuse for having fallen asleep on duty. He expected a commander or a sergeant ready to beat the snot out of him. Snow coated the trench, abandoned except for one unharmed human figure. His mind went into overdrive as he groped blindly for his weapon. There is no need for that anymore, the human said. Ezreal stopped abruptly, asking, How do you know my name? The human smiled sadly and sat against the trench wall. It looked up at the sky for a moment and then dug into its pockets, retrieving a cigarette and a lighter. This is going to be difficult to understand, it said before igniting the cigarette. Turn around. Ezreal turned to look behind himself and found his own still form laying in the trench covered with the thin coating of snow. A dream? Ezreal asked rhetorically. Yes and no, 
the human replied, exhaling a long stream of smoke. Your line charged about seven hours ago. I already collected all of them. You, the harvester of souls, Ezreal said with a chuckle. The harvester is a vacal. The human let out another long exhalation of smoke and said, Humans have a similar belief. The Grim Reaper, as we call it. The problem is neither of our species has killed anything but our own until now. Ezreal considered what the human had said. It was Vakal belief that fallen warriors were sent to retrieve those who were slain and escorted them to the afterlife. Why not one of my comrades then? Ezreal asked. I don't make the rules, the human began. But it turns out the one who kills has to retrieve you as well. One human killed my entire regiment, Ezreal asked in shock. I was manning a pulse laser, the human replied. Then how are you dead? Ezreal challenged me. I'm not yet, the human answered. My unit is doing everything they can to save me right now. If you're not dead, then why are you here? Ezreal asked. The human smiled a little. I'm not going to make it, but you have a choice. Unlike me, you have until my cigarette is finished to wake up before you freeze to death. Then what happens to you? Ezreal questioned. I already collected all of your compatriots, the human said sadly. So I have to stay here until someone comes for me. <laughs> How long? Ezreal asked. Uh, as long as it takes, the human replied. You have a chance. Wake up, and you will live. Oh, all I have to do is wake up, Ezreal asked in disbelief. Simple as that, the human said, putting out the cigarette. You have to choose now, however. Time's almost up. Ezreal looked back over its snow-covered body. And you have to wait uh, until somebody comes for you, he asked. Yeah. Uh, don't worry about me, though. You need to choose now, the human said. I... I don't want to be alone, Ezreal said finally. Brian? Brian woke up to a vacal standing over him. I'm sorry to tell you this, but you're dead, Ezreal said. I've come to get you. Why? Brian asked. You took a round to the head, Ezreal replied. So you came to get me, Brian asked. I didn't want to be alone, Ezreal said. I figured that we could go together. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Caspar Arnold, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.